Minecraft is competitive gaming. Imagine playing really any video game you ever enjoyed playing, but playing it competitively to the best of your abilities. The Esports Club though, we are more than just competitive teams. We host gaming for everybody. We just want people to come out, play games, have fun, and then hopefully host a few good teams that might win a few championships for the school. We are definitely developing and pushing to build and develop that infrastructure that a lot of other clubs already have. Whatever skill level you are, you can come out, have fun, compete, don't compete. We welcome anyone. There's not really a spot elsewhere for people to just play video games. Our club is definitely like all inclusive. So if you're like even just a casual gamer that games, you know, an hour a day or, you know, an hour a week, it doesn't really matter. You can come and play and make friends. So it's, that's really what it's all about. A club like this is meant to bring games out of the dorm room and meet other people, make friends. We do game nights every other Friday night. You get an opportunity to play some games you've never played and meet some people you wouldn't meet otherwise. So if you're interested in gaming, come on out to the club and see what it's about. Hi folks and welcome back to EGFC week 15. I am Waffles for Sid and this is Zohan who will be joining me on the analysis today. We also have Aeon behind the scenes as our lovely producer and our observer for the evening. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing all those fantastic angles that we see every single week, Zohan. Yeah, no, definitely. And we're already going to be hopping quickly in to our Ooh. game between University of Tennessee and Can Kansas. Canisius. 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 But, you know, yeah. it is. Uh, welcome to the English language, right? It's not going to make sense. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's going to be exciting. We're starting on Nepal, which I've seen some pretty interesting games today. You know, judging Ooh. from, you know, from Balcoms to Neo Goats looking. I think we're starting on Village. So obviously teams are wanting to go for that brawl. Mm -hmm. Sadly, no interesting comps on, on it. <laughs> Just basic, basic yeah. brawl, but it's going to be fun regardless. Well, Tennessee here has been working really hard all season as well. They're ranked number eighth going into this. So a lot of eyes on them to really perform well. And I want to see some really clean gameplay coming through. They're kind of in that middle pack area and making sure that they have the synergy and the communication they need to take down their enemies quickly is going to be what they need to really set them up, set them apart from the other middle pack members of EGF League. We see the Tennessee already set up quickly. This is what they want to do. They've set up their fortress in the shrine. And as Canisius tries to push inward, they push straight into the trap of Tennessee. There's too much damage and it's going to be Tennessee taking them down and it capping the point first. Yep. Yeah, no, definitely. They, uh, interestingly, interestingly, just not a lot of poke from Canisius, even though their comp is definitely situated more for poke with uh, eight, uh, with Flick on that Hanzo. But yeah, University of Tennessee using the speed from Noodles and of course that TP from Plank going to allow them to set up. And now Canisius has to engage on University of Tennessee's terms. So it's all up to how Sigma, I'm looking at Ghost to help set up something. Got some icicles getting chipped away here from the back line as well. There it is, Ghost trying to aggress forward with his fellow main tank from Canisius, and it is a tough push in. They lost their support already, and the another, another one goes down. Both of them off the table. That's gonna be Canisius needing to reset, and Tennessee gonna have Earth Shatter and the Symmetra Wall on the line. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, uh, and it, now now we're in a point where Kanisha's has to bait out alts. The alt economy for the University of Tennessee starting to look very good. If they win this next fight, they're gonna have so many alts online that I don't know if Kanisha's can really push it, especially since Coalescence is so far away for Psycho. The hubs right over here on this back. Sneaky, doesn't matter if they're frozen or not, sat on the ground from Basher. 
still Canisius is aggressing forward and they get the kills they need. Tennessee bit off more than they can chew and now they are trying to back up into their little fortress. De Hubs is a, uh, well, quite lonely. I just completely cornered themselves in to keep them alive as this may. They do have 88% on the point and counting. So they're gonna be happy with this much. Wow, a commit from the blizzard. That is aggressive coming through from Tennessee. They don't wanna give this point up a single inch. Another wall comes through from Dehubs, but in the end, it's gonna be Canisius holding strong here, trying to take this point for themselves. Tennessee still not able to quite take it back yet. Yeah, but we just, you know, remember they have to, Canisius has to take this point back. They actually stood, uh, like went off for just a second, but all of a sudden this is turning around and the shatter, I think might actually finish it for the University of Tennessee, unless Lucky Dog can actually clutch it out. But with, this is very oh, chaotic. I, I honestly don't even, I don't know what else to say at this point. And Psycho just C9. That was definitely a hectic fight there at the end. And I mean, Tennessee did a great job at continuing to trickle in and keep a presence on the point the whole time. Yeah, the great, great point presence from the University of Tennessee and, and sadly not a bit of a lack of coordination from Canisius. Uh, almost getting off the point actually originally when it hit overtime, all of their players had actually backed out of there. Uh, they were able to contest for a little bit, but yeah, maybe maybe just a little bit of situation where they needed to target a little sooner. The hub's able to hold on for literally like 20, 20 ticks before right. Noodles was able to get back there. And that was just that was just the nail in the coffin at that point. Tennessee once again rolling out very quickly due to both Plank and Noodles on the Symmetra and Lucio. They have set up their fortress once again, but Canisius has responded in kind with a whole different approach. We have this pharmacy here with Flicka on the Farah, putting a lot of damage and pressure into the University of Tennessee. This is the poke comp they were trying to go for last time, but instead of the Hanzo, we've got a lot of different players moving around. Tennessee, though, gonna take the point for this first open ticks and we'll see if Canisius can push in and find the picks they need. DMEC on Lucky Dogs huge and a barrage already in the bank here for Flicka does manage to go down and in as a process and uh well Tennessee still trying to hold this point. Canisius wanting to move in as much as they can and looks like they have the numbers to try and take this Zohan. Yeah, but all of a sudden the DPS for the University of Tennessee pulling it back for them. And honestly, that just comes down to the fact that Canisius is running double off tank. They're not, they don't have, you know, it's Sigma Diva versus, versus a very, very structured comp from the University of Tennessee. I wish one of them would maybe go towards Ball, maybe even Orisa. Uh, I think double shield would work lovely with, with the rest of the composition that they have. But without something, without a tank to really engage for them, they're not going to be able to make too much space to really capitalize on the picks that they do get from the rest of their players. That was quite the charge from the side coming through from Basher and a nice blizzard going to freeze up a few people of Canisius College and kills coming off the tail end of it. A nice aggressive engagement trying to be preemptive before Canisius can get grouped up enough and in the position they want for their attack. Yeah, and just very, very nice play from University of Tennessee. Kanish uh, is coming into this next fight, however, with, you know, almost five alt. Psycho is going to get that Valkyrie. And with self-destruct coming from Ghost, maybe that is the allowance to make space, but this is final fight territory, so they have to do it. Oh my gosh. Oh. That's what oh, you get no. for being a ground Farah. Basher goes ahead, drops the solo shatter, and when she's on the ground, you don't get that chance very often at all. It's going to be Tennessee holding strong and taking the first map. Yeah, uh, really, really not much to break down there in that final fight, but it just once again came to great coordination from the University of Tennessee and Canisius just not really capitalizing on how well their dps are playing like i'm not this is not a a bash of kanishas as a team this is it's more of just talking about the uncoordinated they're just not very coordinated in the fights that they have but you know 
uh, great play from the farmer. See, not disregarding the uh, shatter kill at the end there, but yeah, it's a couple plays here and there, really close for Canisius, but at the end of it all, you know, University of Tennessee just able to clutch it out. Yeah, well, Tennessee is a very strong team in this league in general. So Canisius knew going into this, it was going to be a pretty tough battle for them and a really good learning opportunity to really work against a team who has a lot of that coordination and uses multiple win conditions to engage in fights. And as we saw, engaging in those fights really preemptively, right? Preventing yeah. Canisius from getting ready and getting set up and keeping your enemy off balance on their back foot the whole time sets the tempo and sets the tone and tennessee have been doing that and trying to improve how they do that consistently throughout this entire season no definitely and i, I it should be it should be noted that they almost the hubris from the university of tennessee was very close to losing them the point at some point so not the not the map but they were on shrine you know they went for a couple silly plays and mm -hmm. at the end of it all the uh hub was able to clutch it out in the end right but it worked out it worked out for them but is but, that gonna you know. work out against teams like marist and colorado exactly i mean that's and the point yeah yes right <laughs> like you no, know, i know no that's what i'm agreeing with you it's it's no totally yeah i was uh yeah <laughs> it's just one of those like it's fun for now, but what happens when you're playing a serious team? Right. You know, like and a team who wants to win this whole league. Sorry. But. And a team who has had their eye on winning the whole league. Exactly. Five, yeah. Four, I love a Widowmaker out of the gate of King's Row or out of the, out of the gate in general. Okay. This is a low risk, high reward play for these few seconds. The headshot already ouchy that's gonna force some resources it does give melee monster 20 percent on that nano already though zohan yeah i mean they weren't i'm glad they switched over but now you know flick attv on this really interesting position as widow not really getting a lot of value out of it especially when the rest of the comp is very brawly and oh i thought that anti -wave, yeah it was going to be an opportunity for canisius but they managed to just kite back tennessee manages to kite back and give the room let the anti wear off and now they just continue to dive on through yeah i mean at the end of it all it it really does come down to it seems to be a little bit of a disconnect with the composition i'm really hoping psycho can get out of there nah. he sadly can't i like That's the cassidy switch though for for like that definitely helps nathaniel a lot more but special special staying on this hot why would you go for that like come on why Oh, that was definitely um, quite the long sight lines coming through. And that's King's Row, right? There are a lot of long sight lines, but there's lots of corners that you can easily kite behind. Ant Matrix is going to open up the fight for Tennessee, and Canisius doesn't want to be a part of it, backing off as much as they can to make sure they don't take any of that extra damage. And they have a chance here to hold this this payload right before the second checkpoint, right? That is a great spot to try and hold and let the enemy push into you. Yeah, no, indeed, and, and now we're, I, I like Canisius's comp. If they're able to get nice engages, they should be able to utilize these ults and win conditions. And oh, with that miss Shatter, maybe a chance? That's what I'm hoping for here for Canisius. They're trying to do their best, but this blizzard from the hubs is devastating. It took everybody out of the picture, and even with a nice Shatter coming through from Nathaniel, I don't think Canisius is gonna be able to hold this second checkpoint quite. I mean, I might have spoken too soon. They've got the spawn advantage now, and with the throw of that self-destruct, they did manage to zone Tennessee back just a bit longer. Yeah, able to push it back, but University of Tennessee with a five minute 30 clock, five minute 30 clock, five minute 30 second clock. Yeah. This is looking, and especially with this alt advantage, I mean, look, you know, both support alts, you know, not even just space making, but uh, the ability to save from you know, a shatter. They don't even have a shatter. Uh, dead eye even. And now with the self destruct. Man, uh, Nathaniel just in a bad spot there. Self destruct on one side and the rest of Tennessee on your other. You gotta pick one to shield from. And 
Well, it is tough to have bullets just saloon in to your back. Paravir here just throwing them from the high ground nonstop as Tennessee is getting closer and closer to capping this third checkpoint. We got Sound Barrier online and it's gonna drop just as the Shatter does as well. Everyone on Tennessee beefed up as the point's gonna roll on forward and gonna be a third checkpoint cap here for Tennessee. Yeah, and that just comes down to better alt usage for the University of Tennessee. Uh, Kanish is uh, with some... I, I I feel they're playing more what they play in ranked. It's, it's a lot less, uh, you know, let's run Lucio Baptiste and more. I play Ana and I play I play Moira, which I honestly I get. I play Moira probably more than I do any other role besides maybe Zen yeah. when I play support, but... I don't know it's, what you play yeah. what what you think you're gonna do well on sometimes as well yeah. right sometimes it's not about the compositions it's about your comfort and so i'm wondering if maybe that's where kanisha's head is at with this team and what they're rolling out and trying to do as well and definitely it, but it, it it shows also with the university of tennessee that they're playing they're playing the meta because they want to win which is very fair yeah yeah. But it also because of it, they have the utility that Kanisha's just can't deal with. Like the immortality field, that I and mean, that is a huge, huge ability. I mean, it's honestly a bit broken. Like people talk about all the time. <laughs> and without, and they don't really have a speed. They don't have something to engage. And the University of Tennessee does, especially on this defense. Now Kanisha's kind of has to engage on the University of Tennessee's foot, not not the other way around, and that's not how you want to play, you know, attack on King's Row. Well, and engaging straight into the May cast is not easy, and oh man, it's going to be over for Nathaniel right here, sectioned alone on uh, right outside the May wall, and if you needed a 101 class on how to do that, the Hubs just gave us a perfect example. Yeah, that was beautiful. That is exactly what I like to do as May. I actually do that that exact spot myself. It works out Why all the time. Why everyone gets mad at her. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, now with this next engage, they just... I don't know why Flick is staying on this Widow, but... I guess? Oh Maybe. man, I thought Nathaniel was going down, but a nice immortality field came through from Melly Monster. Very clutch, saving his life. But once it's gone, it is free reign for Tennessee to actually take the kills in their favor. Everyone's speeding forward to take down one more person. And well, Tennessee doing a great job at stalling this time bank out. And yeah, I mean, and once again, going back to the utility from the University of Tennessee that they're able to have, Noodles on that Lucio allows Basher to walk in, just hold up the shield. The rest of Kanisha's, or the rest of Kanisha's can't really get the other players because of the shield that just blasts forward. And the cleanup was just so easy. Oh, that oh. fire strike was nasty. It clipped a lot of people in while well, everyone went down with the shatter following up. That was, I mean, that was Basher all day. Yeah, that uh, that was a. Uh, I should probably grab my uh, my Reinhardt figure, pop figure, <laughs> and uh, put it in the background for Basher for Max from oh, the man. last series as well. Is this and all, if it works again, no. it works again. <laughs> Poor Nathaniel. Uh, Immortality Field is committed. Does manage to save him this time, though. So I definitely spoke too soon about the deja vu. Does go down in the end as Tennessee continues to throw their resources and cycle their ultimates at them just very, very conservatively. Yeah, and beautiful play, too. Just, as you said before, just using their alt and in such a way where they're always going to be able to cycle them, where they're always going to be able to have something after the neutral fight. Dab, if you get, Hub, if you get this up again, oh, this is, I hope they check this corner this time. Please check, please They've check. They've got please to. Check, please yeah. Check. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, okay. Beautiful nice. job. Nathaniel just uh, on top of the wall and goes back to his friends. It's going to be the blizzard though thrown from Tennessee, trying to get everybody from Kanisha's caught up in it, prevent them from getting through this choke point and push them back to the spawn. Yeah, indeed. And now a minute left on the clock. Kanisha's has some great alts to work with. Amp, Amp, Amp Matrix. Ghost yeah. on with that self-destruct could make a lot of space and of course coalescence for that sustain. And 
as long as they can. Oh. Uh, that, that was. Uh, all right. It's okay. They happened. still have time. They have time to come back, and they'll still have all the ultimates online. But yeah. So yeah, all the alts online. Ghost in a nice position to maybe get a uh, zone them forward, and that seems to be the play. Is it gonna work out? Ooh, oh. just a little bit short, probably from where they were wanting to aim it back. A stun cancels Plank right out of that dead eye, and now it's gonna be Noodles trying to save his team with a sound barrier. Canisius knows they need to get aggressive. They get the one tick they're looking for, and they are still pushing forward for more. The, they are in last fight territory, and it is now time to take it, or they're gonna have to move on to the next map. Tennessee does not want to lose this round here at King's Row. They are throwing everything they, ha they have at Canisius. Canisius and Noodles goes down. Canisius has the spawn advantage as they continue to flood back onto the point and they are gonna go ahead and take this first checkpoint. Press Q to win. Uh, I mean, you know, just uh, use alts and, and you win easy. Uh, no, and that, that just seemed to be a little, uh, I think miscoordination from, from UT, but it, it's not a big deal. I mean, as we go into street space, now there's two, it's two minutes on the clock. And two minutes is very doable to hold, and even if they're able to get it past this, the just the timer for University of Tennessee just so good in this moment, and they have the alts to start engaging. We see the hubs moving around the high ground towards the back as well. Blizzard is still online, so this is probably going to catch Kanisha's by surprise. The shatter is thrown by Kanisha's, but there it is. The Blizzard in the ba in the back, two squishies taken out, going for a third, but can't quite find them. Going to go ahead just regroup with the team, and what a nice uh, flank coming through from Tennessee. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of one of the uh, one of the higher oh, level go. plays that I think of teams don't necessarily aren't necessarily able to work on, which is just player marking consistently. It's hard to mark every player. It's hard to mark where everyone is, and you just get plays like that just blinks constantly. And if you can't if you can't do that, then you know just kill the rest of the team, but Kanisha sadly can't do that Ooh. right now. And, you know, Tennessee opening up this defensive hold right here with their amp matrix from Paravir. This is a really difficult archway to push into and through for Kanisha's and for any attacker in general. Defenders love to try and hold up their opponents here, and it looks like Tennessee is going to try and do just that. Yeah, Dean. 30 seconds left on the clock. The hub already in a great spot trying to get it out. I think maybe a nice call. Ghost Ghost knows something's up. 30 seconds I love Ghost. the caution. Okay, this is what we needed. Ghost decides, no, not even going to be going that way. Dips around and... Oh, a shatter is going to come through. It does clip a couple people here from Kanisha's, but the coalescence is popped in response by Psycho. They don't want to let their team out of this fight as they continue to try and get the kills. Oh no, it's going to be in the back line. Melon Monster getting a little bit of pressure and Lucky Dog getting taken down. There's the the reinforcements that uh, Melon Monster needed. Overtime bar has triggered as Kanisha's has to stay on this point the entire time. A blizzard on there is gonna be really difficult. Can Bob watch their back long enough to keep them in this fight? It is still overtime bar on the board and with now the Ant Matrix coming through from Paravir, Kanisha's wants to try and continue pushing straight on past through it. Plank manages to get the stun but does go down. Kanisha's still rolling forward. Yeah, I don't I don't like that that alt usage from the University of Tennessee. They could have easily re regrouped and re-engaged with a lot of alts. This is final fight territory, so Kanisha's it's overtime, so Kanisha's has to do something about it. And I, I felt they they just thought that their alts could do something. They're going for hero plays and now Kanisha's may be able to stop this. A lot of alts online for them. Le I mean, ults being thrown left and right. It's going to be sound barriers trying to reinforce Kanisha's through this, but Tennessee holding strong, filling the kill feed, and they are going to go ahead and take King's Row. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Play of the game. Actually, a bit confused on that. I wonder if Kanisha's wanted to try to maybe save alts there at the end, but 
they really only seem to start to use those ults once the players were going down. And it just it didn't work out. I think they wanted to try to save ults for the last phase. And honestly, University of Tennessee able to clutch it out. And now they're at series point. Yeah. Well, I would have um, I would have liked to see Canisius maybe be a little more aggressive when that OT bar had triggered as far as taking that space, right? Yeah. Moving into just before the second checkpoint. Um, you, you don't have to have four people on the cart. You can push ahead a little more, try and get some of those utilities out from the other players and to get that, you know, some of the poke phase initiated. Um, like you said, they still had a couple ultimates online towards the end of that, but, you know, can't be holding on to them forever. Uh, Tennessee did a great job at just really bringing in Canisius, and it felt like Tennessee had a trap waiting for them every single time between the walls, the blizzards from behind, the flashbangs coming through from the Cassidy. It was, there's a lot of CC coming out. <laughs> oh, definitely. And uh, now we're going to be going in to our assault map, which maybe Kanishas could do something with it, but we're going to be seeing what happens after the short break. Hi folks and welcome back to EGFC week 15. We are at match point for University of Tennessee going up against Canisius College and we are about to head over to Hanamura, Zohan. Yeah, Hanamura, it's maybe, maybe a chance for Canisius. 
to bring something back for it. Uh, I I really hope they play aggressive. I hope they maybe bring out a Lucio. I'd love to see them. Uh, I cast a curse to that already. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, especially with them on attack, they have to do something now or else University mm -hmm. of Tennessee might get an easy win condition. Uh, or excuse me, University of Tennessee is attacking. Uh, they have to defend well and maybe get an easy win condition for them. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they can full hold, which doesn't look too likely, but I'm maybe. I'm not sure easy win condition against Tennessee is something to really expect though from Tennessee. Uh, it's Even if you have a win condition, I don't think it's going to be easy, especially if you're going up against them. Um, they have, you know, enough of that competitive fire not to just keel over real easy. And, well, it's going to be Tennessee getting really aggressive, just pushing straight through both shields, all right? Doesn't matter. We're going to walk on through. They have some very fast and mobile players, Zohan, and I think this is going to be you know, a little troublesome for Kanishis uh, as they continue to try and hold this defensive point. It looks like they're getting encircled from multiple angles as the Doomfist from Dehubs is just displacing tons of people. You have Lucky Dog doing even more displacement and Tennessee is attacking Kanishis from literally all angles. Yeah, this was, uh, this was one of those compositions from the University of Tennessee where if it works, it works really well, and sadly, it, it, for Kanisha's case, it did work very well. Uh, it, this is definitely a very funny <laughs> strat as Basher waves at the rest of Kanisha's and then goes into the back line. And Plank doing so much work on Widow against a composition, I just said composition, composition that shouldn't usually be doing. Getting value off of it. Oh. Two kills oh. from a whole hog who, how he, some, he just got in the back line somehow. Uh, Kanishas didn't even see him walking all the way through. Now that they've been caught by the minefield, it's going to be even more difficult as they, as Tennessee already has one tick on the board. There's a couple stragglers from Kanishas trying to hold down the fort a little bit, but these sites are going to be devastating, right? Everyone knows exactly which side of the spawn they're gonna be coming out of due to it. The tire is visible and Tennessee pops the sound barrier just before they're about to take this second checkpoint. The fact that they have a five minute time bank and they're running Lucio Zenyatta, I, I think should just show everyone the, I'm not gonna say the, the domination, but the, uh, the very well coordinated play that they're running with honestly a meme comp uh and, well tennessee has been together for quite some time too yeah. right so being able to flex over to these sillier compositions and maybe to some of your off roles that you would maybe use to stall or just take out a pharaoh real quick uh it goes to show you that regardless of who they're playing, they have the synergy, they can anticipate each other's moves. They that? know, oh, da hubs, you look you look you like to bite off a little more than you can chew when you play Doomfist. I'll throw the shield for you. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, and it's just I like the I like the uh comp that Kanisha's excuse me, that University of Tennessee is running because it doesn't make sense at all to me. I don't know where to go from here. Like Lucio Zinana with with the super with the uh, the super monkey. And to hubs on this junk rat. Oh, this is this junk rat positioning. This could be very brutal for them. <laughs> Wonder if Plank's gonna get that new Sombra skin as well. I uh, I'm a big fan of dragons in general, so I'd love to see that roll through for our you know EGF maps that let us keep our fun skins on. Um, starting to see though, still just gonna hang out on this high ground, waiting for Kanishas to try and move towards the point. They're encircling them once again, and such a mobile composition from Tennessee is going to be so tough for Kanishas to handle all the pressure from all the directions. I Lucio has some of the best voice lines too. At least uh, who was it? Dobbs is not on that Doom Fist again, and they're not <laughs> spamming. And they say, uh, and they say right, hot so cocoa I'm... break. That's the other new one. 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I, I, I I'm enjoying the uh, the setups here. This is, it's, it's a bit memey, but it's it's fun, and it's working out well for them. You know, three minutes already, you know, minute already gone, and the dives are just working so well. Immortality field forced out right away because of the dive here from Basher. Once the immor immortality field is off the table, Tennessee just has a heyday, goes crazy aggressive, and continues to put the pressure and onslaught onto Canisius. Oh, not fast enough, Plank. Yeah, the one character I'm not really too worried about uh, coming back fast is, is Sombra. So, <laughs> another minute gone. We have... A far with no mercy and no alts online for Canisius. I like that Nathaniel gives a wave to Lucky Dog. Hey, you're not sneaky. If I see you in that hallway. Pressure's coming through. There it is. Good. Chase him out of your back line. You don't need that harassment. And well, Basher is pretty much biding his time to lay down the harassment from this primal rage online. No, they're walking into it. I think he was gonna, yeah, he was oh, gonna no. see it. Pushed off the high ground though because of Ghost over there on the D.Va and well there it is a nanode Winston rolling through Kanisha's college as Tennessee continues to throw their resources into their tanks and enable them to just get all of these kills. Yeah this is just <laughs> I bet you it is fun to be a tank player on Tennessee with this many resources thrown at you to keep you alive and to get you the kills. Oh no, go, go. <laughs> the stagger onto Ghost is going to push Kadisha's next push no matter what, under a minute. Riptire coming out as well. Maybe gonna get something for it. And yeah, this is starting to look like final fight territory. Oh. Luckily, Riptire not bringing them, not resetting them at all, but. Yeah, this, they need to do something now to keep them in the series. Uh, Plank was caught right there. There was no other words than that. Plank was caught right there. Um, didn't have anything to bail himself out. And well, EMP still on line for Tennessee. Once he finally makes it back, the sound barrier from Paravir is going to reinforce Tennessee on this defensive line, trying to keep themselves in this game. But Canisius is throwing a lot of resources and ultimates at this fight. They did lose a couple people in the process, though. And with 22 seconds left, it is last fight territory, Zohan. Yeah, they, they have to do something now, but the, just the the oppressive nature of this composition from the University of Tennessee means oh. they have to get a pick off first. And I don't, I don't, I don't. Ghost, you have to go touch. Go, 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 yeah, ghost, in the back, touch, um, okay. it looks like Flicka did manage to go ahead and hit the point while we see Plank putting a lot of pressure here in the back line of Canisius. It's still Tennessee holding this point strong, but what? Three kills suddenly come through for Canisius? That's the chance they need to take this fight very at the very end here, just at the last minute. They did this on King's Road for the first checkpoint. Can they do it again here on Hanamura? They are giving it everything they've got, and Tennessee knows they need to perform if they want to clutch out and hold this first point. One tick in the bag for Canisius as they continue. Oh no, that's going to be tough. There it is, back on the leads just barely as two ticks have been in favor for Canisius now. They want to do everything they can, but Flicka low on the ceiling does go down in the end. People from Canisius are now rolling back through to the point, regardless of all the ultimates and resources being thrown left and right. Overtime bar is active as two more are going down from Canisius, and it looks like Tennessee is going to be able to hold this, fir or this first point here. Victory. Yeah, huge props to, <laughs> to our uh, producer. Eon for the uh, amazing observing there. There was a lot going on in that fight. Very chaotic fight. And it was very, very cohesive due to due to their observing. Uh, at at the end of it all, is Kanisha's had some life. They definitely were actually trying for it. They were giving it their all, and I'm very proud of them for that. Didn't work out in the end, sadly for them, but. University of Tennessee, once again, one of the uh, best teams in EGFC. And it, it shows why. Just great coordination, even if it's a bit meme at times, but works out very well for them. 
Yeah. And, you know, they, they have shown that they have the skills to be able to pull off some of those strategies. And, you know, sometimes you do need an occasional trick up your sleeve rolling into, you know, a third round with only one minute on the clock, right? Um, really curious to see what we see from Tennessee later on in the season as we continue on through. But, you know, we do have one more game coming up after this. Uh, we are going to take it to a quick break and uh, actually catch up with someone from Tennessee and see how they're feeling after this round. Hi folks and welcome back to EGFC week 15. We have Plank joining us from the victorious team of University of Tennessee. Plank, thank you so much for joining us here in the booth today. Thanks for having me, glad to be here. Yeah, well, all right, so we're on week 15, okay? We're pretty far off into the season and at this point there's only two weeks left of the spring what has you know what has the evolution of tennessee been and you know what have you guys really been refining throughout these long weeks there's been a lot of improvement on the the macro part especially with like how we're coordinating as a team especially me like i'm i'm usually a sub but uh our uh, main hit scan dps could not be here tonight so i was uh in for him and i i think we've gotten a lot better in general at brawl comp specifically there's a, a lot of improvement on that part. I'm, I'm really enjoying playing it now. Nice. Well, what you, you did excellent today, by the way. <laughs> thank you. You thank did. You. you did. What what in Brawl Comp do you like more? Is it the coordination? Is it how you're following up? Like y'all have y'all seem to have a great 
like utility usage great ultimate usage that isn't isn't pressing q to win like i re i particularly loved on king's road defense that y'all weren't using every alt to win a fight most of the time you might not even use an alt is that what you've been working on or is it just general team synergy uh general synergy especially with like keeping comms uh consistent like not being too loud or talking not at all like we were definitely worked on our comms but definitely our our old usage especially with me like i i used to be terrible with that kind of stuff like i, I just would either not use it or i would use it at the worst time but uh i think i'm, I'm getting better with that and i i definitely agree that like our utility is definitely really good with like not wasting things great yeah and i just have to ask uh what was what was that composition you would call on hanamura especially you know on attack what what kind of what teamwork composition play is this so that was a variation of the yonki splanky where we have uh i i may be messing this up i'm i'm sorry zane if i mess this up but uh this is the ball being the Yoinky and the Doom being the Spoinky. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. It, it's it's a comp we, we like to practice sometimes, uh, just to mix things up, throw the other teams off. It's not something that a lot of people play, so we're we really like surprising people with it. It was definitely a surprise, especially for us in the booth to see it uh, come through. Um, there's a lot of synergy, right? There's some potential come potential there um and it's good to see you guys are also keeping it fun for everyone right you playing the same old composition is boring we all remember what it was in goats uh and we're probably all grateful that it's not the same old same old plank what uh do you want to shout out here at the end what are you most grateful for just kidding <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone you want to shout out or give props to <laughs> yeah i want to i want to shout out the whole team you guys are you guys are awesome and especially shouting out my my friends who are watching right now david i see you i see you i'm looking at you right now <laughs> uh, well yeah. there you have it Plank, thanks again so much for joining us. Uh, special hello out there to David in particular. <laughs> and uh, we really look forward to seeing you guys, you know, continue to play through the last couple weeks and uh, into the playoffs as well. So good luck, dude. Thank you so much. All right, folks, we are about to uh, take a short break before we go into our next matchup of University of Montana against University of Colorado. There's plenty of Overwatch going on on the other EGF channels as well. So you can hang out there while you wait for a little bit and we'll see you on the other side of the break. <laughs> 